Now let's bring in Noah Bookbinder, president of Crew, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, and Ellie Mastal, justice correspondent for the nation. Thank you all for being here. I do want to start with you, uh, and congratulations on a very important legal victory. Um, it is not the first, however, for your organization. We did mention uh, the founder of Cowboys for Trump, who was also removed from office under these measures. Um, and we know that, f that prior to the—I mean, after the Civil War, 14 United States senators—I have a list right in front of me—were expelled from the United States Senate based on this. Can you anticipate, now that there have been two courts that found that Donald Trump did commit insurrection, Colorado Supreme Court and the district court, can you envision how the Supreme Court could wriggle out of removing him from the ballot? Well, look, I, I think it's really important that these two courts found that, and not just uh, in a casual way. They found it after uh, days of witness testimony, thousands of pages of, of documents, hours of video testimony, uh, ar rigorous argument from, from all sides. So this was a, a real process. It was, uh, it was consideration of a great deal of evidence. Um, and, you know, that was the basis for, I think, these, in many ways, kind of irrefutable findings that Donald Trump engaged in insurrection and that this was an insurrection. Yeah. Uh, I think Congressman Rastin is right that, that uh, the Supreme Court is, pr if it goes to the Supreme Court, we'll, we'll see if, if Donald Trump appeals as he says he's going to. We'll mm -hmm. see if the Supreme Court takes it. Um, but they're more likely to uh, kind of move around the edges and think about these questions of who's empowered to make these decisions um, than to uh, disturb those actual, I think, real really hard and fast, yeah. um, well-supported findings about Tr uh, Donald Trump engaging in insurrection. We don't think there's really a solid basis on those more procedural grounds either, um, but I, I suspect that would be more likely where the argument would be. And, you know, and Elliot, I, I wanted to have you on tonight, too, because, you know, I view the Supreme Court conservatives as politicians um, who are seeking conservative Republican outcomes, not so much textual, you know, adherence to the Constitution. They just find what they want to find in there. So why don't you use your lurid imagination and tell us what might they be able to come up with to try to wriggle out of two court findings that Donald Trump is an insurrectionist and though ipso facto disqualified? Yeah, so my issue here is that I, I think that you're, you're framing it as, will the Supreme Court agree with Colorado? I think the real bigger question is, will the Supreme Court agree with themselves? <laughs> Will the Supreme Court apply their own conservative ideology? You and Jamie Raskin and Noah have just brilliantly explained how, by a strict textualist or originalist understanding, this is a slam dunk. I would like to bring up, by a strict states' rights understanding, which is what the conservatives seem to always like to go on about when it comes to denying black people the right to vote and gerrymandering away uh, black voting power. They always want to go on about states' rights. Well, here, Colorado is executing its states' rights yep. to decide who should be on their own ballot. And the mm -hmm. Colorado Supreme Court decision literally quotes Neil Gorsuch from when he was a, t a, a judge on the Tenth Circuit. Um, this is a case that Noah found on crew, so, like, big ups to them, um, <laughs> where Neil Gorsuch says that, of course, Colorado has the right to exclude people from the ballot who do not meet the qualifications for president. So who was that guy? Because that's kind of important. The guy is named Abdul Karim Hassan. He was a naturalized citizen. But the Constitution says that only natural-born citizens are eligible to run for president. And Neil Gorsuch took a strict, literalist reading of that, decided that Hassan was not qualified to be president, and decided that, therefore, Colorado could exclude him from the ballot. This is the same case. This is exactly the same case that Trump is now facing. And so the real question is not, will the Supreme Court follow the law? But the question is, will the Supreme Court follow their own ideology and logic. Yeah. Your question, and, 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 can they, and, and that's really where the ball game is. Indeed. And, and, or will they just try to get what they want? Um, and I want to cite another thing. This is John Roberts in 2010, um, Noah. And this was a case called Free Enterprise Fund versus Public Company Accounting Oversight. And this was, uh, the citation here is, the people do not vote for the officers of the United States. The case was rather regarding whether the president has the authority to fire officers of the United States. Like, could Donald Trump, you know, fire the attorney general and that sort of thing. And they have, in this ruling, John Roberts seemed to say that the president is an officer of the United States. So if he 
And to Ellie's point, Neil Gorsuch have seemed to find in the past that the president is an officer. That doesn't seem like a door they can go back through. So is there some other way? Because I just assume they're going to do what they want. I partly think politically they want Trump gone, but I can't think of any other way to get out of it. Well, look, I, I think that you're right that the the um, law seems very clear on this officer of the United States point. In fact, Donald Trump himself, in um, one of his other cases in the past year, argued that the president is an officer of the right. United States. So, <laughs> right. you know, they're, they're sort of trying to have it all different ways. Um, I, I guess as I look at the Supreme Court, uh, I... I uh, want to think that, you know, this is a Supreme Court that has actually um, taken a pretty tough line on abuses of power by Donald Trump, has affirmed congressional oversight of Donald Trump. Uh, it's also a Supreme Court that, you know, as you talked about, at least in some cases, um, has, has taken a textualist and originalist approach. I think that's an approach that in this case really uh, favors uh, holding Donald Trump accountable under yeah. this provision that, that seemed to be put in place for exactly this, uh, this set of facts. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that there are a lot of reasons to think that whatever you may think about this Supreme Court, uh, that they're, they'll give us a fair hearing if it if it gets up there, yeah. and you know we'll, we'll see where they end up. We shall see. I'll just a note for some breaking. It's not breaking news, but this is some news that the audience should have. That Judge Beryl Howell has ruled that Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman can immediately seek 148 million, their their judgment, their 148 million dollar judgment from Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Giuliani's failure to satisfy even more modest monetary awards entered earlier in this case provides good cause to believe he will seek to dissipate or conceal his assets during the 30 day period contemplated by the rule in question. Uh, we're going to talk more about that probably tomorrow. But um, for now, I have to thank Noah Bookbinder and Ellie Mistal. Thank you both for your time.